Hello. It's great to be here. It's a big room, and the lights are very bright. Doesn't everyone have a Doris? These days we call on Doris when things go wrong, and it's not generally a very good, a very good way. We don't want to interact with people anymore. Um, any second, here we go. Perfect. <laughs> so John mentioned a couple of statistics to everyone, you know, that I think should be a wake-up call for us all. 72% of security breaches are a direct result due to compromised user identities and vulnerable applications. But we're still spending 90% of our security budgets protecting the traditional perimeter. Now, I'm, you know, none of you really know me, but I'm a pretty simple guy, and that seems pretty crazy to me. So let's talk about this traditional network perimeter. We've all heard the term the dissolving perimeter, but what does it actually mean? OK, so what does it mean for your business and your own security? Clearly, this gentleman in the picture is not me. He's, he's nearly as handsome as I am, but he's got a lot more hair. Okay. But I think it's a good illustration of a real-world example that I'm, I'm going to take you through. So this is generally how I like to work, and how I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the room here like to work also. You know, we seldom work in the office. We, we work remotely. Maybe we work from home. So in fact, in the last decade, the number of remote workers has increased by over 100%. So we get up in the morning, we log on to Office 365, and we check our email. Maybe we open up a ta an attachment in Word Online, and then we save that attachment up onto OneDrive. Maybe we need some more information out of a report that we fetch off SharePoint. Now, in 2016, there were 60 million active enterprise Office customers on the Office 365 platform. Next, we're preparing for a customer meeting that we might be going to later that afternoon. So we log on to our CRM tool, maybe in this case it's SharePoint, you, to check on our customer's projects to make sure everything's OK and make sure we're prepared. Now we have to share a document with the customer. So obviously, after removing any sensitive information, maybe we upload this document to, to Dropbox. Now, Dropbox has 500 million users and actually stores over 35 billion office documents. Remember that nice lunch we had a couple of weeks ago? Now it's time to put in the expense claim for it. Hope my boss isn't in the room. So we log on to Concur. We upload the receipt. You know, maybe we check on last month's expense claim. But then it doesn't work correctly. So what do we do? We log on to ServiceNow. We open a ticket with our help desk to try and get it resolved. Maybe some of us are lucky enough to have PTO. So we log on to Workday. We submit our PTO request for our manager to approve it. Now, this is probably after we've already booked our flights and our hotels on another web-based system. Now, what day wouldn't be complete without lots and lots of WebExes, where we spend our time listening to silence, maybe some airport noises, and telling people they're on mute. <laughs> so <laughs> at any point during the day, did we log on to the corporate network or access anything that was behind the corporate firewall? We didn't. So let's just think about that for a second. We have just completed an entire day's work, all using applications that exist outside of our corporate data center. So this is what we mean by the dissolving perimeter. It's already dissolved. You know, cloud applications and mobility have really changed the game. Data is now stored and accessed by devices that we don't control on networks that we don't own. So why is it then that enterprises are still spending 90% of their budgets protecting this traditional network perimeter? And the question really comes down to, you know, where are we making the bulk of our security investment, and is it effective? In my personal opinion, it's not effective. It's not effective today, and it's certainly not effective for the threats that are coming in the future. Only 25% of attacks are targeted at the traditional network perimeter. But when you compare the number of network attacks 
to the number of application tags, it gets very interesting. 72% of attacks are happening at the application layer, but only 10% of our budget is being spent there. And these application threats are the core of everything we do. You know, we're talking about employee records, financial information, personal identifiable information, that this kind of information, if it leaks, it's bad news, bad news for everyone. So what does this 90% actually look like in real terms? Well, Gartner estimates that it's about $11 billion. Just going to leave that there for a second. $11 billion that we are spending to protect what is essentially an empty vault. Because all of the gold that used to reside in our data centers now resides someplace else. So is it any wonder then you know, that we open up the newspapers well, if you read newspapers anymore, you open up the newspaper's website um, and look at the information, but you see the headlines about all these breaches. If we look back at 2015 only, it's a who's who of well-known brands and well-known companies that have reported a breach. Now, it would be extremely naive of us to think and consider for a moment that these companies did not have all of the latest technology, that these companies did not have large security budgets. Maybe their security budgets were larger than some of the companies sat in this room. In fact, we've actually assembled a group within F5 called F5 Labs. And their sole aim is to analyze all of this information and threat information and provide credible threat intelligence to our customers and to the security community. And their research backs this up. This is not a problem about budgets or technology. This is a problem about where those budgets are being spent. So here's the critical point I really think we all need to understand. Security breaches are going to continue until we realize that we are spending our dollars in the wrong place. John mentioned this earlier. You know, with enterprises embracing software as a service applications you know, and moving applications to public cloud and employees being able to work anywhere, and some of the examples like Uber, like Airbnb, the way we do business has fundamentally changed. So this new climate, this new way we have it working, these new expectations we have, you know, that really should compel us to rethink our approach to security. Instead of focusing on the traditional perimeter, we have to focus on user identity and protecting applications. Because it's pretty simple. Compromised user credentials provide an easy pathway to your applications. And your applications provide an easy pathway to the data. And ultimately, it's the data we are trying to protect. Just a little nerd humor in this picture. Does anyone want to hazard a guess of what the binary is? It's F5 networks. <laughs> <laughs> but on a more serious note, there was a large financial institution on another continent that suffered a very serious breach that wasn't widely reported. And what happened was some of their users' credentials were stolen using malware that maybe was under enterprise. PCs or malware on their home PCs. And those credentials were used to log on to the VPN. And once they were into the VPN, they had access to everything. So it's a serious issue. The latest Verizon data breach report says that 63% of data breaches, confirmed data breaches, involved weak, default, or stolen passwords. So wherever apps are located, you need, be, you need to be able to give the right people access to the right applications and the right data, you know, and ensure that whatever device they're connecting from, wherever they're connecting from, they do so securely. So this means that you need to control access not only in your data center, but across all of these environments, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud. And when you have this kind of control, you can apply all of these additional security controls to reduce the risk of the way people are using applications that are not owned or managed by you. You can check the user's location, as an example. Maybe you want to check the type of device that they have. Is it a new device? Is it one we've already associated with this user? Maybe you want to check the health of the device. You know, does it have some malware on it, perhaps? Um, is it jailbroken? 
Let's just think of an example for a second. So imagine, if you will, I know this will take a lot of work, imagine I'm not actually here, okay? I'm in our corporate offices in Seattle. And I've just logged on to my online banking. And maybe I've logged on to Workday or some other system, corporate system. Now imagine, two hours later, I log on to the same system, but this time, I'm connecting from Hong Kong. Now, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, and if you haven't seen the latest movie, you should definitely go see it. But unless we've invented teleportation, that's not physically possible. So why wouldn't we use this contextual information to make a much more informed decision about who and when and where our users can get access to data? If this is the kind of protection, to get this kind of protection, you need a solution that gives you visibility and gives you control. And F5 gives you both. Let me take you through another example. Up until, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago, maybe five months ago, actually, um, F5 ran SharePoint in our own data centers. Okay? It was accessible by F5 employees, about 4,000 people. Now we've migrated to SharePoint Online. Now, potentially, this is accessible by billions of users who are all connected to the internet. It's great for me, because I can just type it in on my browser and whatever device I want to, and I can get access to it. But watch what happens when I put in my email address. So straight away, it understands who I am before I enter my password. And then it directs me to our secure portal where my device and location are all checked. So in this case, it is F5 who authenticates me and federates that information to Microsoft all the time, keeping my user credentials stored within the corporate network. And with this additional contextual information about my connection, F5 can make a much more informed decision about what type of data I can access, where I can access it from, and even if I should have access at all. So if we take it back to my example in the previous slide, I'll log on to SharePoint Online from Chicago, um, and then maybe I'll log on again from Hong Kong. You know, as we know, that's not physically possible within a two-hour time frame. So F5 could understand that and use that context to block my access. Now, let's look at protecting applications. So in the past, when your application lived in-house, rather than living on the internet or in a public cloud, the focus was on securing your applications, and a lot of attention was on, focused on making the code as secure as possible. Now, this is still critically important. I'm not for a moment saying that we should not continue to focus on that. But what I am going to say is that it's not enough. In the example we just talked about, what about the increased risk with user credentials when users are careless with their passwords? All of the secure code in the world was not going to protect you if someone steals your username and password. And what about availability? I mean, availability is something we all take for granted. You know, when Facebook goes down or something like that goes down, everyone loses their minds. So availability is critically important for applications. And an application only has value when users can access it. But if your application is taken down by a DDoS attack, all of the secure code in the world is not going to help you. So without going into too much details, here's what you need to know. F5 can play a unique role in driving and enhancing your overall security policy by providing visibility into all layers of the application flow. And it's with this additional intelligence that we provide that we can help you augment your protection that traditional vices just leave exposed. So it's this contextual information that we keep on every user and every session that allows us to layer all of these protection into the F5 security platform. Now, this really breaks away from the current model, where you have individual solutions providing their own protection in isolation without a view of the overall context of a session. So I'm just going to leave you with a story, if I may. <coughs> Clearly, in case you hadn't noticed, I'm not from here for those of you who managed to understand me. <laughs> but I'm originally from Ireland, okay? 
And every Christmas, we go back to Ireland for the holidays. Um, I've just moved here actually from London, so if you imagine the, the drive from London to Ireland on a ferry, three kids and a dog in the back of a car, and everyone driving for 200 miles to get home. Now it's going to be a bit different, we're going to be on a flight. But we generally go home to my wife's parents' house and we spend Christmas and the holidays there, and it's lovely. You know, he's a chef, he cooks everything, I just drink beer and watch TV. But on one of these evenings, we were all, you know, enjoying Christmas as a family. Everyone was sat around, the fire was roaring, the TV was on, and everyone was looking at their phones, as you all do. But my wife mentioned to me, she said, Gary, um, there's something happening on my laptop. All, all these ads are popping up. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? Any IT person in the room, you get this when you go home. You're the IT expert. It doesn't matter what you do. If you work anywhere closely to IT, you have to fix everything. So I've got a deal now where they pay me in alcohol, and I'll fix whatever they want. Okay? <laughs> but at this stage, you know, I was sitting down, I was watching TV, um, about to watch the greatest Christmas movie at all time, which is Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> But to my surprise, the ads started popping up on my phone. And I have an iPhone, so I was intrigued. I was, how is this possible? Has someone finally cracked iOS? So I actually got a little bit excited. That, that tells a lot about me, doesn't it? <laughs> so I started researching online to try to find out who's cracked it, you know, who's done it, and I couldn't find anything. Then I was trying to... It took a while to figure out what was happening. I, I just couldn't pinpoint it. So I went to the router, or router, as you guys call it, um, or what most people who don't work in IT call the internet. <laughs> um, and I did what any self-respecting IT professional does. I turned it off and turned it back on again. <laughs> now, that didn't work. So I was really scratching my head. I was going, right, I, you know, it's, it's, it's time to shine, Gary. It's time to show these people what you're made of. <laughs> so I logged on to the router. <laughs> Turns out someone had executed a remote exploit on the router and changed DNS servers on the router. Okay? So they were proxying everything we had, any DNS result, resolution request that went to the router. They were rewriting it. They were displaying ads, but they could have been proxying everything. They could have been taking our bank details, our user information. So how do you protect your applications against your own users' devices and things you have no control and no interest in controlling. In this example, if, let's say, a very simple example, if my bank had have implemented DNSSEC, I would have known that. I would have known something was wrong when I went to my bank. So I'm going to leave you with a quote from our friend John McLean. So don't be that guy, OK? <laughs> don't be that guy. We see the same stuff happening to the same guy over and over again. SQL injection is 20 years old, but it's still in the OWASP top 10, and it is still probably one of the easiest attacks to perpetrate against anything. So you're going to learn a lot more about these and how F5 can enhance your security in the breakout sessions. But if you're like me and you want some more maybe immediate gratification, you know, you click onto Amazon and you buy it and it's there in a couple of hours. Next person on stage is going to talk about F5's cloud delivery platform and the security service we can deliver that can protect your applications from attacks like SQL injections and from DDoS. And with that, I'm going to leave you and say thank you very much for your time. <laughs>